Can I please have a motion? We're, we're recording now. Can I please have a motion to open the work session of Tuesday, May 16th, 2023? So, so, all in favor? I think she was trying to get it even. So all right. On one Welcome side of the... everybody. Can you see it? We're moving around the camera. I think I made it worse. That's kind of. What's going on, on here? Like on, on that control panel, if you auto fit the Zoom, it'll catch everybody. Okay. That's a little bit more people. Camera control. Yeah. Auto frame. Auto fit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Much okay. better. Thank you. Well, Thank there's you. no way anyone can see. It's so yeah, yeah. Why is it doing? I don't know. The yeah. camera like adjusts to like who's speaking, so it'll move. Maybe once like, I sit down. Yeah. Will be better. No. Nope. <laughs> zooms in. It used to zoom in. All right. Well. Okay. Anyway, we're just take <laughs> our word for it that we're all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Wow. Okay. All right. Just take our word for it that we're all here. <laughs> all right. So I um would propose starting with the rec and parks master plan discussion and skipping wireless telecommunications unless there's a reason to that's okay that Sabrina, first. Well, yeah, Sabrina, yeah later. Okay. okay um so thank you we have two members of our uh, recreation and parks commission um here um jennifer bounds and jen salon yep. and i don't and i cruzio i see and i don't think anyone else Oh, Christine, Christine Gray is there. Hi, Christine. Um, so we wanted to meet with you guys, both to say hello. Uh, we do try to actually meet at least once a year, um, but also specifically with regard to the master plan, because um, you know we had a comment on it, and I think uh, it's always better to sit down and kind of talk things out. Um, before we start though, you guys did, I mean, it was a fabulous job on the rec department master plan really. And I think I told you Jen over the weekend, I know my son was on the master plan committee and I know mm -hmm. he worked on it for a year and you guys all worked on it much longer than that. And it's really phenomenal. And the fact, frankly, that it got two comments um, is a really <laughs> testament to the amount of work that went into it and, and how fulsome the, the document is. So. Thank you very, very much. Um, so I guess we wanted to hear from you. One of the comments that we had, which you know, was to increase the, um, to high from low, I guess the, what was some blanking on the word, the, uh, the yes, thank you, of um, really connectivity and between the parks and other parks and hamlets, et cetera. And I think that's really important. It was certainly in our comprehensive plan, the town comprehensive plan, which is sort of, this is a part of the mass, the rec department mass plan is part of the town comprehensive plan. So it's certainly in there. And um, you may know, we've been looking at things like uh, the chap line, which would be connecting um, Chapel Club Crossing to the downtown Hamlet through trails, a lovely walking trail um, that would allow, you know, really kids to run back there instead of running on 117. It would allow real connectivity um, through a lovely green space with areas that, you know, you can actually move off of to admire the green space, etc. And then another one that we've been specifically looking at is actually connecting West Orchard to Gedney and then Gedney through the Millwood Hamlet to the North County Trail, um, which also is important. And we've actually recently just got an email about that as well, because if there's no walkability there and to connect those kind of trails all together, I think would be fabulous. And we do have the potential for receiving funding for some of those things as well. Um, certainly Westchester County actually funded a study for the one in Millwood right now, but in terms of getting it done, we're looking for funding for that project as well as, as the chap line, as well as future projects that may come up. I think 
to anything we can do and you know trails to rails anything we can do to increase walkability and connectivity to our parks to our hamlets i think is really important mm -hmm. so that's something that came up um, as part of the master plan and we thought it was really important to kind of raise the importance of that in the master planning process um, from low to, to high. Um, it doesn't mean that money is going to be taken away from other priorities that are listed in that master plan, but it was just one minor change that we wanted to really see. Um, and we wanted to make sure we talked to you about that. I know you, the, the rec commission, not you specifically, mm -hmm. but the rec commission had, you know, some hesitation about that. And so we wanted to talk and see, mm -hmm. um, you know, where you're coming from and have you hear the, the views of the board on that. And and get your thoughts and talk about it. Yeah, I'll start. Um, the overall reaction was because we hadn't heard about this and it seems to just be a change that wasn't discussed with the group. So I think that the in our meeting last month, everybody was surprised because we it was the first we heard about it. And overall for the almost five years I've lived here and from what I've heard from previous members on Parks and Rec is that Chapline, for, for example, has not been well received and it's not something that other people have, well, no one else has made a comment or asked for it on the master plan. Like mm -hmm. the public comment has been open for a long time and it's not some, there's other things that our community has spoken up about what they want first and foremost. Um, so that's where the reaction came from everyone just you know we want to be in the know we felt like we weren't mm -hmm. um i'm deaf i'm not against adding more sidewalks in fact my son my fourth grader came home last week and out of the blue without knowing anything that's going on right now for a social studies project is wants to come and present to you guys about more sidewalks because he cannot walk to his best friend's house. <laughs> yep. And I was like, really? When did that happen? <laughs> Complete coincidence. He has no idea this is going on. He works for us. Exactly. Yeah. Like, she needs to come to our meeting, please. Yes, so check our emails soon from, from, from him um, and his best friend because that's their social study community. They want to come and talk to us. Yes. You know, I'm born and raised here. But, like, I... It's not, I, I'm happy to work together. I think sidewalks would be great. I think, I don't know if I necessarily think the chap line is great, but I am open to opening that up. Um, but, you know, there's fresh faces on the board, on the Parks and Rec board too. And, so, you know, there's new, not everyone's like even educated. The last time we saw a proposal was, I think, uh, the only time I saw it cross in front of me was on social media like four years ago. I think it would be important for us to be more collaborative and maybe somebody come and present those two things. You know, we didn't know that there were grants being looked into. How much is that covering? I want to be more collaborative. <laughs> yeah, and I know that I'm new to the Parks and Record. I've been on for like 18 months. But I first heard about the chat line because my son walked it and he when he was at Greeley, before he could drive, he was like, I didn't want to wait for the late bus. And somebody who was on cross country showed him where it was. And he's like, there's this great trail back there. And I guess the cross country team uses it and the kids know about it. So my perspective is if it's already being used, we should make it safer and bring it up to grade. If it doesn't have to go all, maybe it doesn't have to go all the way where the proposal is if we don't get the funding, but I think something should be done mm -hmm. because he described it like they're moving brambles around mm -hmm. and they're they jumping they over. Yes branches and then it's a pathway to the school too that mm -hmm. the kids are using and so it should be more safe it should be safe for the kids and it should be whatever mm -hmm. and I they think congregate they congregate back there they congregate back there all the time that trail wasn't around I would have known about it <laughs> I know it's been like real yeah no I mean I'm, yeah I it's just um back in the 90s yeah yeah, yeah and it's only like a 1.6 mile so it's like you're not going to stop kids from using it like right. so I think it's our responsibility to try to make it as safe and and there, were, there were questions about, you know, is this is a school into this idea? Is it on their property? Security stuff. So our board has it's we're new. Like I'm one of the oldest on the Yeah, so I I presented to the board the last time it was done in So this first thing you should know about any project is it takes about 10 years. 
Yeah. So from inception to things actually getting built, except for the downtown infrastructure, would probably take 20 years. <laughs> um, from the time it was first talked about to the time it was actually done. Um, so projects just take a very long time. So it's um, it's actually great timing that you were sitting in at the planning board and heard about Augusta. Um, in the course of um, our <coughs> exploring the possibility of sidewalks along 117, it became very clear to us early on that um, due to New York State DOT requirements of a, a six foot, five to six foot sidewalk and then a five to six foot snow shelf, think about the house as long 117 um, as you drive to the high school, that we would be in like, you know, literally at somebody's dinner table or like some of the village houses. So, and if there are any retaining walls, they can't be on state property, they have to be from the back. So if you just look, take a look at the topography of that area, um, it became obvious, painfully obvious to us that we wouldn't be able to do anything. Um, also, the state now requires takings. So it meant that some of those properties were going to go from zoning compliant to undersized, which meant, you know, what does it do to somebody when they want to sell their home? Mm -hmm. um, so it used to be so interesting yeah. that we could have an easement, right? Someone could just grant us an easement to put it over the property. Where they were not allowed to do that anymore. So mm -hmm. when the 120 mm -hmm. sidewalk was built, yeah. we were allowed to do easements. Mm -hmm. You can't do that anymore. Now it has to do with like buildable square footage, which is what I've heard people have an issue with. Because yeah. you can only build them a certain percentage of your mm -hmm. lot. If your lot smaller, the size of the house you can put in. And, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. and yeah, 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 yeah. So it's tremendously problematic, especially because of a lot of our homes have septic. So if you're undersized to begin with, and let's say your septic fails, where are you moving your septic to? So it, 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 it has very practical implications and some very severe implications for those homeowners. We realized what we couldn't do it. Um, so we were looking for an alternative path. And it was proposed to us that we try to memorialize the path that's already being informally used by kids and actually improve it so that it could run from, um, we have property on uh, Warren Book Road straight through um, to uh, Chestnut Oaks. Okay. Um, and so to just take those properties um, and use them for a chat line. And uh, we had an exploratory committee, we have drawings, we have a feasibility study. But after that, we realized that we needed money. And so one of the things we did is uh, we were trying to run along uh, the uh, Westchester County trunk line. Mm -hmm. Which is what the, the path is when they did the repairs to the, the county trunk. That's the sewer line. Yeah, okay. basically. Yeah. Um, and so um, we spoke to the property owners who have the trunk line running through their properties, and we talked to them about the path and got their pros and their cons. We talked to people uh, who lived uh, in the Lawrence Farms area that abut the high school. We spoke to uh, individuals from Chestnut Oaks. We had representatives from all of them on the committee when we took the informed all. And Augusta is actually one of the properties that we had offered to purchase this property down the road. And he was like, could we just do a land swap? Mm -hmm. I'll have more frontage, you can have the back. And we're like, sounds great. So that's actually what that is. But that's six years in the making. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've caught the tail end of it. Anyway, make a long story short, fast forward. We have been trying to uh, get funding from wherever we could. And we found out the day of your meeting or the day before your meeting? That is the day of. The day of, that uh, a $4 million appropriation appears on both Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand's discretionary funding list. For um, that? Just for the chap line, um, which unfortunately does not pay for the entire chap line, but correct. Mm -hmm. And the last quote we saw was years ago. Right, we knew we were doing it in phases. Um, and so um, we were very excited about it. We've already gotten some money. We've already gotten $500,000, which is our seed money. Um, and this would run it, this would put us about halfway. That's great. Um, Where does money the school begins with us? The school has not given us an answer one way or the other. We don't go through their property. We go around their property. Um, but certainly we would work with the school, obviously, yeah, for safety and things like that. Yeah, sure. so the way, the, but the way the path runs, <laughs> the way the proposed path runs, um, <laughs> it is not accessible to the school. It would be mm -hmm. accessible from a sidewalk that would be, that would extend from the school down the right. So there's a connection. And there's going to be, there's going to be a trail there. And, and keep in mind, too, 
but about a year ago we heard the possibility, or maybe less, uh, about a bridge replacing the tracks, or not replacing the tracks, but one of the tracks mm -hmm. across the sawmill. You can think about that connectivity as a great thing for people on that side coming across the sawmill, potentially walking if it's built into a bridge or biking with Whole Foods and the community that's going there to the school, alternatively to the chat line to get downtown to the hamlet. I think it could really be a, a means to really make the community flow. It would be a whole circuit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From one side of the yeah. train tracks to the it's other, really fall around. around. Because yeah. otherwise, even if there is walkability or bikeability, when that bridge hopefully comes at some point, you're stuck. And where do you go? Where you go? Yeah. yeah. This this connects the community. So if you get receive grants for half of the project, then where does the rest of the money come from? Grants. Right. We're more. Yeah. 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 Even if it takes time to do it. Yeah. It takes it takes some time. When we did have downtown infrastructure, which absolutely possibly had to be done. We planned that we were going to pay for the whole thing, but we still applied for grants. And it took us years and years to get them, but we did our, um, our uh, sewer, sanitary sewer was paid for by grants. It's just shy of $500,000, which was a huge shock for us. But it takes, it takes a long time to get grants, but you have to lay the, the, the groundwork for it. We knew it was an ambitious project. Um, but we're not shy about it, and we are tremendously diligent about applying and then reapplying and fine tuning and reapplying again. Um, that's how we got the money to uh, reside uh, Amsterdam Field. Um, that's, you know, a yeah. grant application. Yeah. So we no took and we, we no. took and we, we brought the, the project all the way up to uh, funding. So it's called a shovel ready project. We had it ready to go. And when the grants became available through Senator Markham's office, we were able to mm -hmm. apply for it. We were right there with the Shovel Ready Project, and we got the money, and we think we've got a beautiful view. Mm -hmm. We have a couple more we'd love to redo. We've got a forget me that needs some drainage, and then it can be resodded. We've got the other Amsterdam project. We know how much they cost. We know how to do it. We know how to throw all the funds together. But sidewalks are a, are a heavy lift. Um, the sidewalk in Millwood, that's like, 20 years in the making, and we got the grant for it first, and we had to shift it from 117 um, over to Millwood, and uh, we're still waiting for New York State um, DOT real estate to give us the approval so we can move ahead. So, and you know, I, I would add to that that we always want to be collaborative and communicative, as you say, Jerry. <laughs> and you know, we, we always want to do that, but as Jill said, this has been going on for such a long time that I think people forget what people who just come into the process haven't seen throughout. I mean, I haven't been on the town board for that long, but I was on the school board, so I, I had seen this whole process. And I'm sure on the school board side, there are different people and it's different times, so the issues may change there. But I, I would say that in this case, we had just gotten the information about the $4 million grant. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't have that to come to you with in advance. So. Now everyone was reacting in the moment, mm -hmm. but but I'm glad that we're having this discussion now because yeah, this is how we this is how we should do it mm -hmm. together. Great, but um, sometimes information comes in uh, at the last minute for everybody, so it's not a ill intent to not not sure you know just and just always asking on us. Yeah, we're, we're not asking. We know that chat line was like even in the in right still right. talk. At all. We're not we're asking for approval of the project. We're just asking to change the priority on it. We just yes. connect you know, connectivity. Maybe we're not asking way. for approval yeah. of the project. All we're asking is to make it a high priority to have connectivity, mm -hmm. which then allows us, if anything comes up, any kind of sidewalk project or the, our ability to receive grants to connect, because we hear that every year is connectivity. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. Your son knows it too, like walking around, but it's, yeah. it's not easy because of our topography, because of DOT requirements, the width of our roads. I mean, it's not easy. So to the extent we have the ability to do this, it's sort of something we need to be able to act mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. even though these take forever, mm -hmm. the grant process actually comes up very quickly. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. might find out that because the, um, what they're focusing on each cycle changes a little bit. So sure. we never exactly know until it comes mm -hmm. out and then you might have two weeks to apply. Right, right. So this is something that can help us going forward to obtain those. And 
again, we're not asking for approval of the project just to change the priority. And mm -hmm. we had applied for this grant what, 10 years in a row? How many? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Never got it. Never. So, mm -hmm. and shocked to find out that we were on both campus. That's great. But That's happy, happy. anyone who's no, hearing us. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thank you. Happy, happy here, and is it more just... important that the priority goes to high than the examples of the project are in the language or are both pieces important? I think both are important. Okay. It allows us to point to it. So this is really important for a town. Look, this is something that's in the comp plan. It again appears in the rec plan. And yep, that way we can be iterated. Right. But the, the, the town board is presented every year, every other year with their list of priorities. And sidewalks is always mm -hmm. talked to. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah, so yeah, we're constantly time. looking. Yeah. The, the problem is, is that the way the stuff the way town is left is that if it was easy, it would have been done already. Yeah. So yeah. everything that's left that's is the challenges. It's just, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's okay. It's just it just people need to understand how long things take. Mm -hmm. And we need, we need to share it better. Yeah. And are there any issues that you guys are seeing from the rec commission that you wanted to bring to our attention and, and have us address? No, no. I don't. No. We love having a liaison there. <laughs> Very helpful. Nice. And then may, I, maybe, like in the future, maybe we can have a list every once in a while of grants that you are applying for that fall under Parks and Rec, just to stay, you know, just to stay in the know and know what is being put out there. You know, it doesn't have to be every month, but just you know that we can have discuss. Be excited mm -hmm. about. Sounds like yeah, a good plan. Totally. Yeah. Okay. I've always wanted sidewalks. I didn't really understand that that was part of Rec. I, you know, I didn't know where that fell until. Me very too. Recently. That I, I don't think it's, very it's not obvious. always part of rec. No. Yeah, the the check line's a little different because if we we were doing it, one of the things that we considered when we designed it, um, at least our preliminary designs, was that we needed to be able to take care of it. Like, was it going to be an all year path? Right. All year round path. And the answer was yes. We want people to be able to walk to the train station and walk back again. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure it was it, there were going to be cameras that it was going to be lit. That we were going to be able to clear it from snow, um, mm -hmm. and that it wasn't going to be like you know when it's uh, what do they call it uh, the dust path. Like by Whole Foods. Yeah, like by Whole Foods. Stone dust. Stone dust. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Which is just so terribly hard to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That you know we we would make sure that somebody could go buy it with you know a little you know mini excavator and just you know clear the snow off it and mm -hmm. um, you know handle it the way we would any sidewalk. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think for future, if we know what grants are being, you know, what you're applying for, especially if it falls under our commission, then when things move fast, as you're saying, it would be great to, you know, then we won't, it won't be such a surprise. <laughs> and certainly as opportunities have come up, we, you know, when Senator Harkham said we have money, you know, we said to Ike, you know, what, we, we have the opportunity to get money, what do you need, what's the high priority, and I think he came up you know, with Amsterdam Field, for instance, mm -hmm. we knew it really needed a lot of work. And I know he discussed it with you. And mm -hmm. so it's something we're, we're never kind of deciding in a silo. We're right. actually making right. sure that we contact, you know, Ike and you to make sure that, right. that things could like I, that happen. Could I suggest that when, you know, each year we're looking at our priorities, maybe it's a conversation that we share out pretty promptly. So mm -hmm. the you guys are on the same page as the town board as far as yeah, the, the, the awesome. larger umbrella projects and priorities. Sure, that'd be awesome. Okay. All right. All right, again, thank you guys for the, for, of work, for the amount of work yeah, that you, you do. We really appreciate everything you guys did. Likewise, thanks guys. Well, thank you. Thanks. All right, Ike and Christine, anything you wanted to add? I Christine? No, I'm good. There are other people. Okay. Ike, anything? Yeah, but I think Bob has to be for that. I think that's a no. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Um, all right, so um, I don't know who's here. Is Bob on? No, he's at the planning board, so I'm just going to see if I can. Hi, Dennis. Hello. Hi, Dennis. 
Come on in. Hi, yeah. Zoom, that's okay. Of course not. Come on okay. in. Come on in. <laughs> Very nice here. Of course, the chair doesn't like Zoom either. Hey, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. 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 Welc
see it hopefully it's coming up for you it is all right so let me just see if i lost all the controls here all right uh so uh getting right into it uh i think uh, uh jill pretty much took care of this slide uh but for orientation purposes it's exactly on the uh, border uh with newcastle and osning uh it's uh, is located uh, just between the two water bodies. Um, the dam itself is a laid up stone dam uh, and it was first uh, studied in uh, 2014 as required uh, by New York State uh, for all at that time intermediate hazard dams. And it was found uh, to have uh, insufficient spillway capacity, meaning it couldn't pass uh, the water uh, from upstream to downstream in the manner that was intended uh, with the geometry that's there. It was seeping uh, and its structure was uh, unpredictable. Uh, we touched on already that there are two dams adjacent to each other and we are upstream here with this one. Uh, Spring Pond has completed their reconstruction process on their dam. Uh, and uh, during the pandemic, uh, about uh, 2020, Town of Newcastle decided to decommission Upper Mankle. The town uh, continues uh, to do the work that's shown on this screen. Uh, it uh, is still a high hazard dam uh, out today. Uh, and that was an outcome uh, of the engineering assessment. Uh, and so there's an emergency action plan in place uh, should the need arise to warn folks downstream uh, of a condition at the dam. There is also a monitoring program in place uh, that is performed uh, together uh, between town forces and tectonic. Uh, and it's uh, submitted quarterly to the state uh, so that they have a record uh, of the town's compliance. And we also uh, keep a uh, routine dialogue uh, with New York State, uh, just to keep them abreast of where this dam is at and what the town uh, is doing uh, to uh, get toward the end result, uh, which is that, uh, that decommissioning goal. The work completed uh, in the recent past, uh, and, and it is getting to be about 10 years now, that engineering assessment uh, the alternatives analysis that was done in 2017 and uh, brought uh, before the public in 2019 and 2020. Uh, we looked at the two cases, you know, could this dam be kept? Uh, should it be kept? And what would it cost to keep it? Uh, it required significant upgrades uh, to that end. And then what might decommissioning look like? Uh, what might that cost, how that might be arranged. Uh, the uh, safety, the enhanced monitoring uh, and the, uh, the siphon, uh, should the need uh, to lower the water body, uh, uh, those were developed roughly concurrently with that analysis. The recent work uh, has involved surveying uh, all the uh, original alternative analyses and uh, schematic studies uh, were done based on old record information. So now we have good information as to where the properties lie uh, and where the uh, land form exists above the water and below the water. We also have completed all environmental documentation when it comes to the uh, biological inventory of what uh, is of note in and around this corner of the Sunny Ridge Reserve, uh, as in addition to the, uh, the wetlands, the open waters, uh, and current sediment data uh, for what lies below the water. We've also just completed uh, the schematic design phase 
uh, of this project uh, as well here in the early part of this year, uh, which brings us uh, really to where we stand now, uh, which is the current schematic configuration of the dam. So before I go too much further, any general questions on what we just touched on? Hearing none, I'll carry on. What you have in front of you is a uh, uh, color-coded engineering plan. Uh, I am not an artist. I am not a landscape architect. Uh, but uh, what you see in green, uh, those limits uh, are actually the extent of the water surface today. Uh, everything within those boundaries uh, is underwater. And we do have that bathymetric data, and it's rather steep. It gets about uh, 10 feet deep at its uh, deepest point. Uh, in the decommissioning configuration, uh, the permanent water will shrink to the light blue color. And you'll see three pools uh, working from left to right. Uh, the uh, left uh, side of your screen is where the dam is located. That is the south end. That is the downstream end of the facility. The upstream end, the north, is on the right side of the screen. The dam itself, we really only have to remove about 40 feet of it or so. Uh, we can also then just reduce the height uh, just for safety sake, since uh, a tall structure invites uh, uh, adventurous and climbers. We can then uh, develop these pools uh, and we can stabilize the regions in between using the stones that we salvage from the dam structure itself saves on hauling material away and it keeps it uh, uh, in a useful uh, 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 secondary life here within the impoundment, the former impoundment. We will uh, relocate some of these sediments now that we have them mapped and defined on the bottom uh, out of the erosive areas and into a place uh, where they can be uh, uh, essentially relocated in the south quadrant here, the left side of your screen, uh, and they can be covered in that location. The idea uh, is to take the darker blue area, and that is an area of transient water through storms. It'll rise and fall uh, as uh, uh, storms and rainfall pass through the, uh, the former water body. And those areas uh, will become constructed wetlands. Looking at it in section or profile, uh, we have an exaggerated uh, scaled uh, engineering schematic here. Uh, but again, uh, working from left to right, downstream to upstream, uh, you can see right in the middle of the screen, the current water elevation uh, and you can see the uh, configuration of the three pools uh, in between uh, and their lower uh, elevations in between. Our current status is we are on the cusp of uh, beginning the permitting process with the DEC, and that is going to start with a pre application meeting that we'll be requesting and then accomplishing here over the early part of the summer. Uh, and that's really uh, to bring the regulators up to speed uh, with where this project is at, what is ultimately now proposed after you know the various steps of the former years, uh, and uh, really just to get a sense of any uh, items that they see as a, uh, uh, a key point that they want highlighted in the final permit packages that will be submitted. Uh, next year. Concurrently with that process, and as part of the town's agreement with Westchester County, uh, the county is contributing the mitigation planning design. Uh, so the area that will become uh, the wetlands, again, that darker blue here, and the fringe area higher up in the darker green, uh, those plantings are being uh, collaboratively developed uh, with the county. 
One bullet I did not put on here, but Bob Scioli is in the process of quarterbacking concurrently as well, is a communication uh, with the adjacent property owner uh, where the town hopes to secure the right for access for uh, temporary construction purposes. And just for reference, working my way backward here, uh, approximately in the middle of the screen, coming up from the bottom of the page via a single property that is along Croton Dam Road. Uh, and the property is also located within the town of Newcastle, not Austin. That is the route uh, into which uh, construction vehicles will gain access. Our next steps are just outlined in here, very roughly. Uh, we will be coming back uh, to the town with a more detailed uh, uh, technical presentation, availability for Q&A, uh, and also the county's mitigation plan later this year. Uh, the exact actual, the actual format uh, is you know, to be determined, but uh, uh, we'll be able to work that out to uh, uh, what the town finds uh, desirable and agreeable. Uh, as I mentioned before, detailed design permitting, uh, and then ultimately the uh, final construction estimate, uh, that'll be sorted out in the coming year, 2024. Uh, and once that's all ironed out, uh, uh, bid and construction uh, proceed from there. Uh, just adding to the uh, to the durations, uh, it is worth noting that mitigation monitoring will uh, be a key component here uh, at the end of the project. It is multi-year, uh, but it's a good thing because it ensures that the uh, planned mitigation plan actually develops uh, into what is desired and is not overtaken by invasive species or nuisance species, what have you. I'll leave it at that for the moment. Uh, and if we want to open to further questions, we'll go from there. Anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, um, could you talk a little bit about uh, the recreation that would be um, accessible there? I, I do remember um, seeing that there would be passive recreation opportunities. Is that still the case? It is not a focus at the moment. Uh, the first step right now is to uh, understand what the mitigation plan will be and what the environment will be adjacent to the water. Um, I think uh, at that point later in this year, uh, I think the town will be in a better position to try to understand what opportunities might be there. It's not precluded at this point, uh, just uh, at the moment we're focusing on the decommissioning element of it. And then the town can understand, uh, I think they have a better picture of what they're getting uh, and then could understand how it connects to the rest of Sunny Bridge Preserve. Right. That, well, I would expect that would be the priority now. So, of course, I was talking about down down the line. So, so Mark not... is an engineer. <laughs> so his oh, focus okay. his just, focus is yeah, you know course. keeping the town out of trouble with the DEC um, and As making it sure. Be. Yes, I'm very appreciative <laughs> just, of that. I just wanted to know if someone could, could tell me whether that's still. Um, yeah, I, future, I, I think that the there's I think that there this, are pathways that are going to yeah. be established through there so that um, so people can walk right. through it. They just want to make sure that uh, the plantings take before people are trampling through the place. Yes. Um, yeah, first things we, first. Yeah, no, no, yeah. and that we can establish yeah. it, but I think it ah, oh, Bob. There's Bob. Hi. Sorry with the timing, I apologize. Um, but um, thanks for joining us. Uh, so Vicky was just asking about the uh, the, the potential recreational uh, possibilities going forward, whether or not there might be walking trails that could be established through the, the wetlands going forward. Is that something that, at, at what point would, would, could we talk about that? And would Suzanne from the county be somebody that we talk about with it? With, Bob, you're oh. muted. Oh. Thank you. We've talked about this. Thank you, Edward. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think we spoke about that before. We have. Yes, yeah, I think it's a good thing to do to do the trails. Uh, I know Dennis will be highly involved with that with Suzette. Matter of fact, he's going to be working with Suzette on that. So uh, that'll be one of his priorities to do with her when they're doing that. I have a 
question. Once everything is set with the permitting and construction begins, how long is construction and restoration? Mark, could so you answer that? I will. Uh, construction, generally, uh, any dam project doesn't get done in less than eight months. Uh, seasonally, we prefer uh, to start in the winter, particularly when dealing with uh, sediments uh, in that regard. Um, so, you know, I think the eight months is a good placeholder. It's where we've uh, uh, been working and it uh, remains feasible. Essentially, you work your way into the spring and the first planning season. Uh, then the mitigation, the establishment itself, that's going to be at least three years uh, of duration uh, to uh, uh, ensure the catch. And, and if I could add, so it's been my experience, so we're going to have to get permits from the Corps, we're going to get permits from DEC. Uh, don't know what they're going to require, but typically they require like a five-year monitoring period and you have to submit annual reports. And in the conditions of those permits, some of their thresholds, it's not annual, it's like at the end of the second growing season, and because you want to try to achieve this balance of, you know, you're, you have a design, but you also have the ecology that is going to try to, you know, naturally recruit, seed, dictate, and you kind of have a floodplain forest network already at Sunny Ridge. So um, that's why it's funny, the first thing that popped into my head when you said, and how long is the restoration going to take? And I said to myself, I guess you have to define that endpoint, you know, as far as the plantings, you know, that would be certainly like one stage, but then it's, you know, what defines, is it achieving, is it advancing, is it succeeding, does it need intervention, does it not need intervention, that ends up kind of during that window of like your required monitoring period, so um, I, I'm kind of happy with uh, and it's funny that you were speaking about the Parks and Rec Master Plan before that, because when I got to go through, that was like, you know, one of the good things that I got to do during COVID was when I went through all the parks and kind of just did my summaries and inventories. And, you know, Sunny Ridge had, uh, you know, uh, a few native herbs that, you know, will, will colonize quickly and, you know, are beneficial. And, you know, I was kind of happy to see that that when this project came around, I think it'll, I think it'll do well in addition to, you know, whatever we want to try to supplement and implement. So um, you just have to wait for it. That, that's all I'm going to say. That's been my experience with restoration. Like sometimes after a year, you're like, I don't understand, but herbs are amazing. And all of a sudden the second year, you're like, wow, okay, this really worked. This is good. You know? So I, I just forewarn you. I, I'm, I'm not predicting. I'm just saying it could be anything. Um, I, I do notice that uh, Dan is here from Ossining. I think I've got two Dans here from Ossining. How are you guys yes. doing? Um, good. Um, I manage uh, the Hamlet on Spring Pond. So um, the community of uh, Spring Pond um, actually paid over the 10 years about a million and a half for their dam uh, reconstruction project. So all self-funded, unfortunately, for them. Okay. We're going we're gonna to make sure that we don't impact you. That's, Thank you. That's, that's the point. That's lower. Thank you. Right, that's lower than go. Exactly yeah. right. Um, I guess I had a question I wanted to make sure of, um, and that's that um, they've modeled the hydrology of this because you're losing quite a large impoundment. So I want to be sure that the, the, the loss of that storage isn't in any way going to stress out some of the drainage conveyances in the, the town and the village of Ossining. So I guess that's a question to uh, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, we've done uh, detailed modeling both on the uh, preliminary side in the earlier studies and then as part of the, uh, uh, the schematic design that's been completed at this time and, and, and will be submitted to the state. Uh, the existing dam uh, serves no flood control purpose. It has about eight inches of free board on it now. Uh, and so pretty much what comes down from the upstream end immediately washes right through. Uh, the facility down below. So in that sense, uh, it uh, winds up uh, being in a good position to not provide 
uh, and to not harm the downstream reach uh, here. And it makes it a bit more straightforward when it comes to decommissioning this facility. Um, really, our focus here has been making sure that the uh, the pools and the channels uh, are not erosive uh, and that give it, the water an opportunity to uh, drop from segment to segment uh, to sustain the habitat uh, and that we get the uh, the sediments that are down there out of the way into non-erosive positions so they don't wind up uh, in Purdy Pond uh, behind Lower Nickel Town. Yeah, I guess we had a, got a report, at least I saw on my records from, I think, like 2020. So I assume there's a new report now, or is that still what we're operating on? Uh, so the 2017 uh, alternatives analysis uh, that was funded by the uh, Hudson River Estuary, uh, that formed kind of a programmatic uh, uh, statement for the decommissioning process. Uh, what is being assembled now is an updated version uh, of that report focusing solely on the decommissioning. Uh, and that information, when everything is put together, uh, will be brought forward uh, both for a, uh, a consultation uh, with the town later this year and then ultimately become part of the permit package. Okay, well, we'd appreciate it to, to be in the loop on that. Um, I mean, that's our, our real concern. None of this now is taking place in the, in, in the town. So that's not a concern, but uh, the hydrology could be. So we would like to just review that to be comfortable that we're not gonna have a problem as a result of um, these changes. Otherwise, good luck. Any other questions for Mr. Anyone on, yeah. on the line? Question. No, I'm just asking that. Members of the Conservation Board, Victoria, Karen, any questions or concerns? Hi, um, I'll unmute and it's Karen Anton. Um, yeah, just a quick question. I'm not sure we're at that point yet, but it was mentioned that um, Westchester County is working with the town or um, yes, regarding yes. the plantings. Yes. So we were just curious when that, you know, decisions might be made or when we might, you know, talk about it further with the town or what's going to happen. So our, from a timing standpoint, the plan mm -hmm. is to come back later this year when Suzette has a chance to pull that all together and has something that she can roll out uh, in front of everyone and we can get some consult from there. But uh, she is only uh, uh, just starting her process now. The engineering schematics, you know, were given to her, uh, I don't know, Bob, last week, uh, something along those lines. Uh, you know, so she's she's just getting her feet wet. She's been involved throughout. She's aware of what the goals are, uh, but she's only now uh, sharpening her pencil. Great. Well, thank you. Bob, is there anything else that um, you want to add to the board? No, I've met with, I've been working with the uh, homeowner down on, uh, I believe, 203 Croton Dam Road, and they're very amenable about the consent release form that I'll be working with Edward on. Um, Tectonic is preparing some items that they have requested. I ran this by Jill. Basically, they're looking for some site line improvements, some drainage improvements on that property, and of course, we're going to redo their driveway and gravel. So, He's very uh, amendable to it. Uh, so as soon as I get those plans from Tectonic within the next week, I'm gonna sit down with Ed. We'll draft some sort of preliminary CNR and then we can send it to the homeowner, uh, Jonathan Sanchez, and hopefully he'll uh, sign that. I wanna get that going with right away because you know, sometimes that goes back and forth a few times. So yeah. that's all I really have to add to it right now. Terrific, thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. So Good night, all. Just so the board is aware. Um, so when Nate Nickel Dam was brought to our attention as being high hazard and the state um, tightening their rules and regulations as to what they will tolerate and what they won't tolerate, the board was faced with the question of whether or not we were going to be uh, improving the dam and bringing it up um, to speed 
for demolishing it. Um, it was a million plus no matter what we did. So when, you know, Austin talks about the fact that they privately, because they own that dam, it's a privately owned dam, um, spent a million plus dollars, that's how much it costs. And what we were concerned about was that that's, that would help meet uh, New York State's regulations in whatever year it was. But when they made the, you know, those standards more stringent two years later, we were going to be left with the same issue. Uh, we were able to secure grants through uh, FEMA um, and also Westchester County, who was tremendously helpful in coming to us and saying, we hear you're decommissioning this dam. We're in a position to help you and pay for the, um, you know, the uh, the replanting and the, what else is Susan doing? The, uh, about Bob left, Bob. Uh, yeah, no, Bob left back oh, to the planning board. Okay. <laughs> um, the schematic, the, the whole, the plantings, the restoration. Yeah, and then, and then no, I know when we have FEMA, was excited about that. Yeah, very excited about it. Was, yeah. Yeah, influx, so. Um, so FEMA's been paying us incrementally um, as it goes, so they don't give you the full amount of the money, but they have committed to us that they will pay us for it. So it's uh, more like $1.4 million that we're being that we were able to secure in grants for this. Again, a project that's taken literally, you know, 10 years. Um, and well, what again, it can't go quickly. Like there's, yeah. a, there's so much involved. Yeah, so many more steps to mm -hmm. even get it decommissioned. So mm -hmm. many things need to happen. Right, so I whispered to Holly, but I don't know that everybody heard. The reason why we do it in, in the winter, in dead of winter, is because when you disturb sediment, it stinks. Mm -hmm. And so you do it in the winter when the smell is at you know, a minimum, um, and it's a slow process because, you know, it's, yeah. And people um, should know that the hazard does not mean that it was in going to the uh, That's not what it was about. Yeah, it's, it's not. But um, hard lesson learned for us. We took this property in then. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, thinking that, wow, open space, great idea. We'll have this lovely, you know, water you know, mm -hmm. feature, isn't it great? Not realizing what that means. You know, we're that much smarter, we know what it means, and we are really careful about the properties that we take. I guess that was yep. the point of the recreation part of it, yeah. because and that was the original that was intent, that, right? right? So we right. may as well try to get to that end point. Yeah, right. And yeah, it, it will, we, we will get to some very, some asset recre uh, recreation, mm -hmm. but it's going to take a little while. and. With the permitting, we have to make sure that we dot every I and cross every T. So it's definitely on the radar. It's just going to be implemented a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. So let's to our joint discussion with the ERB. All right. So uh, we're, we're joined with the chair, Jonathan Rosenblum, is here with us. Um, Good evening. Yeah, and I, that's it. You're, you're flying solo. Huh? I think so. Right. I Mark, think, I think we're I'm deserted. Mark? Yeah, Mark, I think Mark Eric and Karen and Victoria, I think we're done. Yeah, well, Mark can go. Karen, Thanks Karen. for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, we appreciate well, thank it. you very stay. much. You're welcome yeah. to stay. You're thank you for stay. inviting us. Thanks thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Thank you. Bye. All right, John. All right. Yeah. I'm up. Well, I thought that most of the reason that we were going to be here tonight was to it, listen to and participate in the Minkel Dam discussion. It's uh, true. I'm not sure that there is anything uh, of burning importance that we need to discuss with the board, uh, except to say that uh, things have been relatively quiet on the wetland permit front uh, post COVID. Uh, and we have uh, on more than one occasion uh, over the last two years canceled meetings because there were no, ap no active applications to be considering. Uh, Yesterday and, included. <laughs> yeah, yes, last night included. <laughs> uh, and most of the applications, to be honest, that we've been considering have been relatively minor in terms of proposed work, intrusion on wetlands, uh, et cetera. I mean, we've seen more patios and decks uh, over the last year and a half than anything else. Uh, and, uh, yeah. 
to a certain extent, I think we've been uh, not talents being wasted, but uh, it would be nice to be busier, to tell you the truth. Uh, so. I, I don't know that we have to fix it. No, no, I mean, development is development. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> people, are, people are only doing what they want to do to their houses. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, we can yeah. announce yeah. that you're bored and people yeah. are starting yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very little. <laughs> Be careful what you want to I will note that we are down a member uh, and have been for some time. Uh, and not sure you know, what we can do in terms of encouraging applicants. Uh, you know. Are we advertising? Yes, we are. It is, I think. It's periodically in the, the newsletter uh, yeah. that Lisa puts out and et cetera. But, uh, you know, I guess what we do is not terribly sexy. So uh, it doesn't attract a lot of interest. Maybe yes. I'll, I'll write about it and put like a call because we, we did that for the, the board of assessment review, which is less sexy, but we did get people. So now, now. <laughs> um, so uh, maybe I'll write a little blurb about it and, you know, get people okay. a little interested or we'll do that. All right. The one thing that I would note also for the board and for the record um, is that we've been at the ERB. Um, in a period of transition over the last two, three years, because uh, our longtime chair, Bill Flank, who had been in, in, you know, instrumental, the, I guess he was involved almost since the board was set up, uh, was chair for well over 20 years, uh, left town. And at the same time that he did that, Steve Coleman decided to retire. <laughs> so, um, the, uh, the institutional memory, you know, that we lost to two and a half years ago, you know, was significant. But the one thing I wanted to say is that Dennis, um, has been terrific in terms of filling Steve's shoes and, uh, you know, in many ways, we just continued on, you know, without missing a beat. So I just want That's to great publicly to thank and recognize Dennis. Mm -hmm. the work he's been doing. Great. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Lots. Look at Lots. Can I see you guys back here too? I can use it. They made fun of my wallets. They did. Yeah, it's kind of a weapon. <laughs> um, all right. So, well, thank that, you for right. all the work you're doing. Thank and we'll try to get you busier. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and we'll, we'll bring you back when at the end of the year when they give us their uh, their update on uh, on the Minkle Dam. This yep. is like the hottest yep. thing that's going around, at least, you know. Yeah, John doesn't can... understand some of his hard rules. Applicants don't even get to the table. I'm like, look, I, I, this will be denied. <laughs> I have to come they, back with something see, else. Maybe he's doing too good a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. We have no problem saying no. You can let them come to the board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely excited. <laughs> Trying to jump up business. Okay. All right. Um, any thank questions? You. Thank you, All right. Well, thank, thank you guys you. so much. Thank you. Very much. Pleasure. All right. Appreciate yeah. you. You're almost safe. All right. All right. Okay. So we'll go through the like forever. Like the the pool. <laughs> I, but, but this is what happens with projects. They, once I get your approval, they move to the back burner, and then we're working on them, which is why I, I'm right, thinking to myself, right, right, right. how is it that she didn't know about it? And then I'm like, but I spoke to them. I mean, I, I personally presented to the Rec Commission, and I'm thinking to myself, who was there? John Ray was there. Right. <laughs> he's still there now. Yeah. No, no, he's, no, gone. he's gone. Yeah. Whatever, but I'm like going through the people in my mind, and I'm like, oh my gosh, was I even there? And I think maybe it was Ike's first year or something. But you know, that's when we were, you know, doing our outreach and trying to get all of our information, you know, in our ducks in a row. And then once that's done, it like falls back on staff to just like get us funds so we can move along with it. Um. All right. So the next thing. 
on the list. You really need. I put this on about wireless communication. So obviously, I only need know, a couple of minutes from Sabrina. Let me just let. Well, her I'm just going to set the stage yeah. for it. But we uh, obviously know we have cell service issues. We were lucky that we advocated to get into that Northern Westchester, you know, wireless master plan, which we did. We heard the presentation a few weeks ago. So, you know, I don't want it to end there, obviously. Next steps are we need to take that presentation and look at where they've identified kind of our largest holes in service, see where those are, where do they fall in terms of are they, is there public property nearby, is it all on private property, is there parkland, you know, where are they? And what makes the most sense um, to try to look at to potentially move forward with? Um, certainly, I think it was very clear that we would never want, you know, that our whole town spoke that they like the flagpoles, you know, if we were ever going to do anything, nobody wants um, you know, a giant cell tower. Um, everyone wanted the hidden towers, but you know, we need to think, we need to identify where those holes are and what the possibilities are. Now we haven't, I think, yet received the final report, right? But we're we've sorry, seen it enough that we we can start working on where those are. So there's not much to report. There's not much for us to do here. I just wanted uh, you guys to know that we hadn't forgotten about it. And I think Sabrina and town staff are, are taking that and really looking at now where are those holes and what type of property is it on and where could we even think about moving ahead. And then they bring that back to us and we would we would then discuss that. Do we have a guess at what the timeline would be to come back to the discussion? Well, that's what we need Sabrina for. Oh, got it. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> hey, Sabrina. So, Sabrina, I just gave a little intro, uh, you know, about the wireless cell towers and that you're kind of now taking the plan that was presented to us and looking at, you know, where were those gaps in service? Where do they fall in terms of public land, private land? You know, what our options are. And then that's something that town staff would then bring back to the board as something we might want to consider. Obviously, it would be another it would be steps after that so the question was what what would be timing on that do you think we haven't even received the final report well so, I know. so so the first step is receiving the final report i know that there were comments and changes i don't know what those comments and changes were but we would need to identify whether or not there's any public property or town property in the areas where there is no service um, or very little service. And, you know, it would require some mapping overlays, looking at property outlines. Um, and, um, you know, it really hasn't risen to the top of priority um, unless you guys want it to be top of priority. Um, I can tell you that right now the there's priorities in relation to the grants that are due in July. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the seeker analysis for 50 North Greeley. Um, I can definitely give attention to the wireless study, but I was really w waiting for that final report to be, you know, provided. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think you know generally, well, we know we haven't yet received that report. We do kind of know from the report she presented where those gaps in coverage are. Um, so it's something I think we should start to look at because our residents, not to throw more on your plate, but you know, it, it, this is something that is, is a significant issue in town. Um, and we've heard a lot of complaints about it. Um, so it's something to start looking at. And I wouldn't just look at, pri at publicly owned property because we saw like an Armonk on 128 where that nursery decided to put up a a cell tower on their private property. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a potential that even if it falls on private property that depending on the size of the property and the you know, appetite those people have for having a cell tower on their property that it's something we might want to let them know that they fall in the gap mm -hmm. and if it's something that they want. I'm guessing it probably isn't, but you never know. If it's well, a I, I think what's important, they may. We, we need to drill down on the area where the gaps are, right? Mm -hmm. Like how many properties, what's the topography of the area? 
for all we know, it's on DEP property adjacent to the reservoir. Um, mm -hmm. Those seem to be the areas. So we would need to do some property analyses or, or area-wide analyses where that service is missing, where those gaps exist, which we can do. Um, and, you know, I can take a look at it and put together yeah. a specifications for it. That's easy to do. Yeah, and Sabrina, you know, as I just mentioned, this this may be the sort of thing where if you can look at it, that that we it, it is a, a prime intern project to be able to do some GIS stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we can do one or else working with the county with their shared services on GIS. Yep, yep. and um, I will be speaking with the county on shared services on Thursday. So it's a it's a right. timely discussion. Right. So if we could just add this to their list, um, that would be great. The other thing I, I wonder, um, and as soon as we get the report from Susan Raybould, I'll, I'm going to follow up with her, which is how much of our poor service is a reflection of not a lack of cell towers, but um, uh, what did she call increased it? Increased usage. Uh, increased usage, where, where we are overloading what we currently have. And so- We have a gap in service due to topography. We we know that, like in looking at the areas, there's just the topography, the hills, the valleys. True, but I have to tell you that in town, mm -hmm. during the day, the service is terrible. And, we, and the question is whether or not there's over- some of it is definitely increased use because it did get worse during yes. the pandemic. And now with more people utilizing wireless service and from internet home. from home, it certainly hasn't gotten better. So I think right. some of it may be enhancing what's on current towers right. and then others may be needing to add additional towers. Right, and so I'm just wondering whether or not Susan Rabel would be able to distinguish the two for us. I think it was in that report. Right, there was yes. something about it because that may be the lower hanging fruit for us, mm -hmm. trying to add services to existing poles and seeing whether or not we can get a bit of a boost in efficiency uh, just for that as a, but you know, obviously leaves, doing both. still leave some areas just Absolutely. Without question. Without I, question. I think we'd be able to have a better, more thorough discussion after we get the final report because we're just mm -hmm. going to revisit all of this yeah. all over again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's good to keep well, it in she mind. She basically presented the final report. I think there were just a few tweaks she was making, but we yeah, got I don't that know presentation what a few months ago. Yeah, but there's stuff that she didn't give to us. It was a difference between her presentation and what's actually in the report. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, we'll yeah, proof is in the pudding. I'd really like to see yeah. them in the board. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I will follow up with her tomorrow. We'll follow up with her. They're very slow. Hey. So, yeah, I can move on that. No. We, we, didn't, we didn't pay for it, so I, right. you know, I'm very appreciative, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> all all right. right, I think uh, I think that was it. That was all. Okay. Thanks, thank you. Thank all you. right, thank you, Sabrina. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so before... Um, we get to the administrative items, um, which are set forth here. There were two new things I wanted to add on it, which I I had discussions about today, and I didn't um, I didn't let anybody know. I figured I'd just bring it up. So two things, both came from the Holocaust and Human Rights Committee, yeah. um, and one is something that I know I brought it up with. Jeremy, when you were on the board, you might have also been on the board, Vicki, where they had that idea a while back. Remember about like a buddy bench where basically if you were feeling lonely, you could sit on this bench and people could come talk to you. So we had said that we thought there was kind of risk a little bit with that, that if, you know, you don't know who's sitting on that bench and maybe you don't want your children or adults to go sit on that bench, but they've sort of revised it since then. And their thought was now have it be a know your neighbor's bench, especially, you know, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. There is um, a lot of disconnection between people and they thought this would be a nice area where once a month, they, it would be planned where you could come and people could meet on this bench and it could be young families, it could be, um, it could be our, our seniors, anyone who wants and kind of get to know your neighbors and that during, and it would, it would be planned. And during the summer, it would probably be held kind of near the gazebo and maybe in the winter in the community center once a month for an hour. 
um, to just as a way to get our community to meet each other. I think there have, especially with the people who moved here during the pandemic, I hear over and over again that they've had difficulty meeting people because for two years they were locked in their homes basically. So I think it's actually, I like the way this has kind of reinvigorated and I thought it was something interesting. They just wanted to know if this was something that the board would be remotely interested in. I don't think it would be much of a monetary expense. It's more a programming um, expense that they would, um, they would take over doing this. Um, it doesn't even need to be a new bench. It can be needed this bench that already pre-exists. Um, so that was one thing. Uh, so why don't we talk about that one first? What are your initial thoughts on that? Did they need us to do anything? I mean, Not really. I they just, could just organize their own. Yeah. Sponsored by their I think we, I wanted to bring it back because right. we had a visceral reaction the first time that when it was more of like a buddy bench and you don't know who was sitting on that bench. Yeah. This I, I to me, I like the iteration of this. Yeah. I do too. So, but is it centered around a bench? Because now that we're talking about it again, I'm thinking, what if a lot of people- Well, well, not, well it's gonna be like, an area let's around say the what, bench. What, <laughs> 10 people come in and they're gonna do musical chairs. No, no, they don't have to sit on the bench. They don't have to sit on the bench. It's not about a bench. It's called a know your neighbors. But maybe like if it's the winter, they could go in the community Center. Yeah, yes, that's what we said. Yeah. So maybe it could not be like not know your neighbor's bench, but just like um, know, your, we neighbors. Could know your neighbor's event. Yes. 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 In fact, that's what I wrote. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's fine. Okay. I actually spoke to somebody today who moved during COVID. They don't have children yet. And she's on an app trying to meet friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, so oh, yeah. yeah. So I know. This, I think is really great. They don't have any kids yet. I guess, you know, it's hard to move to the, the, the bench part could confuse people. I agree. It doesn't need to be a bench. No, but you know what? Maybe, maybe they know something that we don't. So I would like no, to. No, it doesn't need to be a bench. But I think it's a great concept. I do. Really it's a great okay. concept. So we don't need to do anything. I just wanted to kind of bring it up as something I thought was a good idea. Sure. I don't really have any. Um, it sounds like a nice, yeah. The, sure. the other thing which we probably do need to approve because where I suggested it is actually on public property, but <laughs> I want to get your, your thoughts on this. So the Holocaust Museum in Houston did had a program where they were having communities send in butterflies, not real butterflies, like fake butterflies a million and a half to come to represent the children who were killed during the Holocaust. That has been, they received their million and a half butterflies. So that program is done. But there was a thought, is that something we could do here in town to kind of bring remembrance of that? And they wanted to know if they could display the butterflies. So I sort of had a thought with them, well, what if it's something that they could get stencils and we can actually paint butterflies um, and this would be something they would kick off during community day. And I thought it might be really interesting to do that under the bridge in that area that's kind of ripe for some kind of mural or painting. And yes, is right now it's just painted white. The graffiti's been mm -hmm. painted mm -hmm. over. Um, and do that and allow kids, you know, at certain times it would be planned and you can come and paint your butterfly. and. Um, it doesn't have to be kids, it can be adults, and they can either do it stencil or freehand if they're so talented. Um, and over the next number of years, see how many butterflies we can get over there to commemorate this and we could paint a little plaque. It's a protected area, so it wouldn't, uh, you know, we had chalk there forever that never came off. So it's a protected area, you know, we'd have to kind of monitor it a bit to make sure it doesn't get graffitied over, but that's that sort of everywhere. Consider that uh, we discussed the mural project. I think we need to figure out if that's something you want to consider doing. I mean, it sounds like a nice idea and concept. Um, I feel like I have to put an asterisk here and say I'm Jewish so I can criticize. <laughs> I don't know if that's a great spot for that. It's it's a road that people are driving through. No one's really stopping there. And if it's something that we are considering in terms of the art murals mm -hmm. it's probably a prime spot for potential for murals so that's just my thought the concept is fine um, I, I don't know if that location and, and just think of what you need to really think what the next step is if that's if we are going to really consider these murals murals if is that a spot so to your point with the murals 
that were going to cost like what fifty thousand twenty five. So, with what you just said, that people kind of ride through and don't stop, I would sort of advocate that if we're going to spend money on a mural, that maybe isn't the best place because people do kind of drive through there and not stop. You know, I know we were thinking about maybe putting up a wall at the end of uh, King Street. Right. you know, kind of next to breeze uh, against, yeah. the, against yeah. the train tracks there. And that's very visible and there are tables in front. And that's something that if we were going to paint there, because we, yeah. we're, we're not going to do a ton of walls. murals right now. Yeah. I, honestly, if we're going to be talking about public art, I feel like it's kind of a bigger discussion that should involve the community and what they want to see um, in terms of public art, especially if it's going to be there for years. I mean, I don't have any opposition to butterflies, but I think I'd want to engage the community on that personally. Maybe if it's something we care about, maybe it shouldn't be down there because it's obscure and it's a dark area. And uh, but I do agree that it would be good to do something there to make it nicer. Yeah, I'm just not sure if we're going to have butterfly commemorate um, what you just said that it that that area does it justice, really. Um, I just, just thought it, it's around, a big know? area. So if the goal was to actually get a million and a half butterflies at some point, yeah. it could potent they could potentially all fit under there. They could, yeah. Right now, it's really unattractive under there because there was graffiti. It's painted mm -hmm. over white. Yeah, it, look, it's just painted over white now. And it's not, I thought if there was something that we could do that actually makes it's it look pretty nice. under there, I we mean, could, butterfly, I worry, colorful yeah. butterflies could be very pretty. Yeah, but I worry about the area and people, I don't know, I hate to even say this, but the potential of people going there and, you know, yeah, vandalizing, it? Yeah. it would be really sad. And it's just a, it's an obscure area that people can, where people can do things like put graffiti. If this is a little, well, even different. I don't know if you could fit a million and a half. Yeah, no, it would be nice because that that back mural needs yeah. mm -hmm. with all the flags. Mm -hmm. I, I get me. I was thinking that too. A butterfly is smaller. That whole hillside, as it spring comes and it's a beautiful place. Maybe next Holocaust Remembrance Day. Maybe next Holocaust Remembrance. Something they could do in a year. That would be permanent. Though. I was I mean, thinking that too. But it would also be. Engaging, I mean, and it would be so visible, like an art yeah, installation. It would, it would be a real statement. Maybe we should suggest that. Consume that whole side of it. And they could I maybe have, well, the only thing is that they have something planted to put here. It around every year. So you would have I mean, to do it every year. So maybe don't do, maybe it's, it's you know, we do it each year. We put 10, uh, 10 butterflies mm -hmm. on one stick. They could do it each year. People could take their own, their butterfly. Yeah, butterfly. right. You bring your butterflies. Mm -hmm. You bring your butterfly. You take it back or whatever. Just people mm -hmm. can get it, or we just. And it's conceptual. You could say one butterfly stands for. I I don't know. It's um. Right, but I think something like that. So, is so they do this very permanent exhibit and mm -hmm. Okay, because I, I was just thinking that um, yeah. one of the, the things they did for the like children's book festival. Uh, one year that crumbs. they stenciled on the ground just with like mm -hmm. watercolors, um, mm -hmm. you know, dinosaur feet. Right. So it would sort of just be cool along the sidewalk as long as it's watercolor paint and it's going to close off. I don't do it to solve this mm -hmm. today. I mean, these are no, I can, yeah. I can bring but it's a, all it's a very all sweet sweet thoughts to them and yeah. see what they think. Yeah. And for okay. what it's worth, it seems like um, a, a museum is better suited to be able to maintain an exhibit like yeah, that than, exhibit. than a town. Yeah, might be on that scale. Yep, it might be a little bit of an, uh, a larger undertaking than even they anticipate, right? Because also town resources installing the butterflies. I know it's like a heavy lift even for the 9-11 flags, Well, we right? wouldn't if it was painted, you're not installing yeah, it. People one time. would paint them. It's one yeah. time. And it's just an area that's ripe for something under there. No, I agree. And it was like really right nice when we did the chalk the walks and had like chalk but I also nice have to wonder things if, under there. Um memorial, because that's what it is for children that mm -hmm. were lost during the Holocaust. I wonder if we would want a more contemplative place for something like that rather than under an overpass too. You mm -hmm. know, I just wonder that's a great point. 
you know, we planted something. We planted, I think it's a maple over here next to the gazebo where we have the cherry. Cherry. The weeping cherry. Right? That's something you you go and you could sit and you could reflect. Well, we okay. have a Holocaust no, memorial where they do it. No, but I don't know. Just I don't I, know if I, I love. I don't think it does it just under yeah. an overpass to paint butterflies for children that mm -hmm. would die murdered. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I agree okay. that it's an awesome place to put something. I would love to see something pretty under there. I'm just not. I don't know. Okay. I don't want to be like we put butterflies for dead children under the overpass and have people be like that's insensitive and we invite the kids to come and paint yeah i don't want any i i'm, I'm just no. thinking people will have things to say like it's insensitive Ooh. or something okay so, um, all right i will bring that back to them but now i want to go to the and i think it's, um, it's, it's a great museum also i i just want to say that i i've had occasion to um in other positions i've been in to look at the issue of children being involved in memorials and how that impact children, some children, in, in negative ways. Um, I don't know. I think so this is education. And it's something to consider when we don't have expertise in this area um, to involve children in something that. Well, that be adults. It doesn't have to where, be you know, there, there have been studies that show that kids are impacted. And again, I'm certainly not an expert in this. I have read about it in conjunction with other proposals. And I think it's something to be careful about. In right. It doesn't have to be children, though, painting it. It can be adults painting it. Okay. That's what it's commemorating. Oh, but I also right. think that given the fact that everyone who was in the Holocaust is dying at this point, yeah. to make sure that you keep this education alive, yeah. especially for children, is very important. Well, I think we all agree with that. Yeah. The question um, is how... But it can be adults who paint this. That mm -hmm. It's just meant to commemorate the, the children. Who yeah. Them. Okay, I will bring that back to them. All right, so we could just move on to the administrative items then, Jill. Okay, so our administrative items, we've got adoption of the monthly reports, April 2023, adoption of minutes from April 2023, um, authorization to purchase three mason dumps. Once again, we're trying to, um, you know, we've got a vehicle replacement policy. We're trying to keep up with it. We're having a hard time with uh, ordering things um, and having them delivered in a timely manner. Uh, next is authorization to approve suburban carding annual increase. Uh, this is for uh, uh, commercial buildings in the school contract. Um, next is authorization to reject and needed the uh, Millwood Water Treatment Plant bulk uh, petroleum project. Um, the bids did not come in as we expected from them. Um, we're accepting chips, which is um, uh, money that we get from the state for paving. Cape New York on uh, extreme winter recovery. And this is the pop, pop is the pop hole relief mm -hmm. monies uh, for uh, uh, fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Um, additional monies that the state gives us for um, uh, plowing their roads um, within our town, like 120 and 117 that we take care of for them. Um, Okay, um, authorization to accept ozone upgrade for the primary disinfection system at the Millwood Water Treatment Plant. Um, authorization to purchase water maintenance material uh, for uh, DPW, the water unit. This is uh, water maintenance, is, um, uh, fire hydrants. Um, the, you know, we keep all of this stuff in stock, so if anything goes wrong. So it's the, it's the bolts, it's the screws, it's the boot my yeah, least favorite. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. least yeah. favorite. It's a, it's yeah. like a like three hundred units of every yeah. little <laughs> four inch pipe, four <laughs> inch, six inch <laughs> pipe, two inch pipe. Yeah. It's like uh -huh. It was yeah. So, but we keep all this stuff on stock, and fortunately, or unfortunately, they use it every year, and they go out to 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 bid so they can get it. Um, we're um, approving a noise waiver waiver for chat pack roof replacement just so that they can start at seven as opposed to seven thirty and hopefully finish by three so that we don't impact the rentals at the chat pack. Um, authorization to approve there were some change orders for the getting retaining wall in the staircase project for landing. Um, and then we've got three proclamations our food allergy awareness week proclamation, the National Police Week proclamation, and also the Asian American Pacific Heritage Month proclamation. Yeah, and we circulate actually all those. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Any uh, comments, thoughts, discussion on any of those? I mean, all right. So, um, just before we get to the work session, uh, before we get to the public hearing part, um, I think that given our discussion tonight, we were going to just adjourn the public hearing to next week of on the recreation and parks master plan, oh. just because we had a discussion tonight, let them go back if they have any thoughts and then we'll come back up to it next uh, right. next week. So we're going to put it on for 20. I can't imagine it's going to be much. No, no, and they didn't seem to have an issue with that. With the changes. No. Since it was scheduled for tonight, the motion we'll open it. We'll open and then yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, I guess we're adjourning the work session and going into the public here, public meeting, or well, we can. Uh, we're not having a public meeting, so we can just have a motion the... to open okay. and again to adjourn the uh, public hearing on the rec master plan. Next so week, so we'll. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, and can we have a motion Thank to you. open the public hearing on a proposed local law amending town code 123-32 regarding electronic hybrid car charging? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I did see that there was one comment yeah. that came in. And that will be made part of the, of the record. Um, is there anyone online who has a comment on this? Nope. All right. Any of the many people here? <laughs> no. All right. So I would propose that we close this public hearing, leaving it open for written comments until, uh, what's today, the 16th? Until... Friday, the 19th? Sure. At 5, 5 p.m.? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all right, so I think we can just move to some resolutions that we have. Unless there's anything else, Jill or Ed, that you have. All right, so let's move to resolutions. Sure. I move to accept the resignation of Howard Dubs from the Board of Assessment Review, effective May 16, 2023. Town would like to thank Howard for his many years of dedicated service. Second. All in favor? Aye. I move to offer the appointment of Mark Toulis as member of the Board of Assessment Review for the unexpired term, effective May 17, 2023 to September 30th, 2026. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is this, I think his last name may be spelled wrong. Yeah, it's spelled wrong here. It's oh, yeah, it's one out. Yep. Sorry. I move to authorize the waiver of the noise ordinance section 90 5A of the Code of the Town of Newcastle to allow for work to commence at 7 a.m. for the Chappaqua Performing Arts Center roof replacement project as requested by the contractor Armatite in order for a timely completion of the project. Second. All in favor? Aye. I move to authorize the approval of the following change orders from Peter J. Landy, Inc., 13 Bradhurst Avenue, Hawthorne, New York, pertaining to the Gedney Park wood timber retaining wall and staircase replacement project. Uh, change order number one, relocation of the low voltage irrigation line sprinkler repair for $3,629.12. Change order number two, additional versatile lock blocking coping units, $1,335.64. And change order number three, feed for expedited fabrication, delivery, and installation of railings for $2,070 for a total of $7,034.76. Second. All in favor? Aye. I move to authorize the approval of change order number four from Peter J. Landy, Inc with the Gedney Park wood timber retaining wall and staircase replacement project, which includes the overrun and underrun for each respective item number with the total cost underrun in the amount of $8,394.65 as further detailed in the memo from the town engineer dated May 15th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
I move to adopt the following Food Allergy Awareness Week proclamation. Um, whereas Food Allergy Awareness Week was established as a national week of encouraging food allergy awareness and supporting those who are impacted by food allergies and anaphylaxis, and whereas food allergies affect approximately 33 million Americans, including 6 million children under the age of 18, and whereas according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the prevalence of food allergies is significantly increasing among children under the age of 18. And whereas nine foods cause the majority of all food allergy reactions in the U.S. Shellfish, fish, milk, eggs, tree nuts, peanuts, soy, wheat, and sesame. Symptoms of a food allergy reaction can range from mild to severe, such as anaphylaxis. And whereas anaphylaxis is a serious allergic reaction that is rapid in onset and has the potential to become life-threatening, and whereas each year an estimated 3.3 million Americans require emergency room treatment for symptoms of a serious allergic reaction to food. Reactions typically occur when an individual unknowingly eats a food containing an ingredient to which they are allergic. And whereas medical emergency medical treatment for severe, severe allergic reactions to food has increased by 377% in only a decade. And whereas managing a food allergy on a daily basis involves constant vigilance, and even trace amounts of an allergen can trigger an allergic reaction in some individuals. Now, therefore, the town board of the town of Newcastle does hereby proclaim May 14th through the 20th, 2023, is Food Allergy Awareness Week in the town of Newcastle, New York, and encourage the residents of Newcastle to increase their understanding and awareness of food allergies and anaphylaxis. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I move to adopt the following resolution declaring May 15th through 21st, 2023 as National Police Week in the town of Newcastle. Whereas the President of the United States and Congress have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. And whereas the members of the town of Newcastle Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the residents and visitors of the town of Newcastle. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency, and that members of our law enforcement agency recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas each of us should take the time to reflect on the ultimate sacrifice that officers have given nationwide, and let us keep their family, friends, and fellow officers in our thoughts and prayers. And whereas the men and women of the town of Newcastle Police Department are, are part of the fabric of the Newcastle community and unceasingly provide a vital public service. And now, therefore, it is hereby resolved that the town board of the town of Newcastle does hereby proclaim the week of May 15th through 21st, 2023, as police week in the town of Newcastle and urges all of our citizens to honor our law enforcement officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to our community and in so doing have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I move to adopt the following resolution as it relates to Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. Whereas during Asian Pacific Heritage Month, we celebrate the many achievements and contributions made by Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders to our economic, cultural, spiritual, and political development. And whereas Asian Pacific Heritage Month grew out of the establishment in 1978 of Asian Pacific American Heritage Week, created by representatives Frank Horton of New York and Norman Y. Mineta of California and Senators Daniel K. Inouye and Spark Matsunga, Matsunaga from Hawaii, Signed into legislation by President Jimmy Carter, and whereas the town of Newcastle selects the theme for the observance of Asia Pacific Heritage Month in May 2023 as solidarity, community <coughs> engagement, and celebration, and whereas the observance of Asian Pacific Heritage Month calls our attention to the continued need to battle racism and build a society that lives up to its democratic ideals, and whereas the town of Newcastle continues to work towards becoming an inclusive community in which all citizens past, present, and future are respected and recognized for their contributions and potential contributions to our community, the state, the country, and the world, 
And whereas the town of Newcastle is proud to honor the history and contributions of the Asian American and Pacific Islanders in our community throughout our state and nation. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town of Newcastle, New York, declares May 2023 to be Asian Pacific Heritage Month. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all right, anything else? All right, can I have a motion to adjourn? So Second. All in favor? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.